and uh, yeah, be careful with the spring clip. Hello guys and welcome to this Volks Wizard video which is actually episode 7 of Project R8. Now at the end of episode 6 I showed you what the Prestige Wheel Centre satin bronze wheels look like on the car and at the time I was using the original silver centre caps which I have to admit didn't look very good. Well the good news is I've got some black centre caps and some black wheel nut caps and they look a whole lot better so when we've done today's job I'll put them back on the car and you can see for yourself but before that we need to do today's job and that's to replace the rear brake discs and pads. Now when I bought this car in December 2018 I wasn't particularly happy with the handbrake. The brakes themselves were fine but the handbrake was pretty terrible and you don't want to see a car like this rolling off down the road when you say stop to take a photo of it on a bit of a hill. I don't know how it got through the MOT to be honest because they were pretty terrible and you have to pull the handbrake really high up to get it to grip at all. So this has been a bit overdue and it's not a cheap job unfortunately because this car's got very big two-piece brake discs the discs alone are like, I reckon about 700 quid if you bought them from Audi over the counter. In the bizarre world of the motor trade now, I can buy off eBay brake discs delivered to me by a courier for 510 quid that if I went to TPS as a trade buyer, I'd be paying around 20, over 20% 20 more. So the VAT element I'm saving by buying them direct from a dealer online. They're from an Audi main dealer called Mon Motors. They've got a parts website called Audi Parts Direct. I've got no affiliation to them, they were just really cheap. So if you want some Audi parts, check out Audi Parts Direct. To get the pads, well, pads are always something you can save on discs. They tend to have a captive market there, so I think Brembo maybe do a deal with Audi to keep the supply to themselves for 10 years. After that, then they get you can buy them elsewhere. You can buy the standard round disc from Paget at Euro Car Parts for about 60% of the price. And I have to admit, I was tempted because I can't see any real benefit to the wavy brake discs you get on these cars as standard. But I didn't. I went for the, the genuine part. But you can save money on the pads. So instead of going to Audi and getting stitched up on the pads as well, I went to online. And there are two sets of pads you need for this car. Bizarrely, it's got a separate caliper for the handbrake. So that's a normal Brembo type caliper and that's the one for the handbrake so you need two sets of pads. I went to the uh, TRW website, they're a big like automotive parts company, they do steering systems, brakes, uh, suspension, they're a proper quality brand, they supply a lot of Porsche stuff, well they did on 996 era. And I found out the part numbers I wanted, went to eBay, lo and behold the, the, the shop down the road called Sabre Auto Parts that were doing the pads for the caliper for 25 quid. I went to Euro with the same part number and I found the, the main pads and they were 60 quid. So I went down to Sabre and said, can you do me the, the Euro ones for the same price? And they said, actually, we can do them for 45 quid instead of 60 quid. So I said, brilliant. So I think all in, I've paid less for the discs and pads, two sets of pads, than I would going to TPS and buying just the discs. What the crazy world we live in. Anyway, so we've got all the pads. Actually, I'll show you what we've got then. So this is a brand new genuine disc, the wavy disc, and the part number for it is 4006156601B for Bravo. They're not handed, so you do get the stupid situation where the venting works better on one side than the other, but hey, I didn't design it. And these are the pads then, so I'll just show you what the originals look like. Let's just have a look at the disc then. So, yeah, it's only really when you take it off that you can see how bad this surface is on the back of the disc. The front's actually not too bad, but that might explain why the, why the handbrake wasn't very good. So I'm expecting both handbrake and normal brake to be a lot better now. That's going to be nice and smooth. Now these are the little pads that look like the ones on my mountain bike. And those are the originals. These actually say Techstar on them but they're stamped Brembo as well, which is a bit weird because they're two different companies, I thought. And this is the normal pad. So interestingly, there's a lot of meat left on these pads and I have no reason to think they're not original. So as you can see, there's not really much more meat on that brand new one. So that's made by Brembo, but oddly, you can read it on here. I don't know if you can see that. It actually says Ferodo there, which is another brand. So I didn't know Ferodo and Brembo were the same company. 
So yeah, the TRW are very good. This one's got a brake pad wear sensor and one of the TRW ones also has, so they're exactly the same. Okay, well, eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that my t-shirt is no longer great. It's black and that's because we're a couple of days down the line because I had to order some tools to do the job properly. As I mentioned earlier, my windback tool for calipers, for the handbrake, uh, didn't work on this car. It's not the right size. It works on every other Volkswagen Group car, just on this one it's different. So I had to order a kit and I've had to order some punches to get the pads out of the calipers you can improvise but you'll just end up damage, damaging the lovely black paint so this is a universal piston wind back kit we only really need i think that one this is the original vag one just put the light on well that's the Volkswagen standard one and that's the smaller one but there's a tiny little piston and a tiny little caliper so makes sense but this kit they only about 20 quid delivered from amazon so a bit of a bargain and then we've also got some punches which i mentioned a sec ago these are to get the pads out without damaging the caliper and we've also got a dremel because my original one sadly died apparently it's quite common they're not that brilliant but they are quite cheap so again this was off amazon i think it was 42 quid delivered the reason for this will become clear later okay the first thing we need to do is get the handbrake caliper off to do that we need to take the pads out by removing the pins that retain them and then we can undo the two 15 millimeter bolts at the back and actually just come off there's no fluid connection to it so it can just um, hang by its cable somewhere, although it's probably best not to put too much weight on the cable. With that off, then we can get the caliper off. So again, pads out first, I think, then two big bolts, and then we've got to secure that somewhere so we don't put any weight on the hydraulic hose because that could damage it. With that off, then we can undo the T30 and the disc comes off. Well, that's the theory. I'm not going to be able to stay in shot for all of this, so I might have to edit this back a bit just to save you the boring bits but let's see how we get on so there's two pins out first i'm also connected to a mic which could lead to all sorts of issues so the pin okay punch it in the hole Uh, next up, just a 15mm, couple of 50mm bolts on the back of the caliper, hold it onto the hub. So let's try and undo those. Ooh. Okay, so while you can just get the, pad, the pins out so far to get the pads out. What I really want to do is get the pins out altogether and give them a good clean up because the pads slide on them so they need to be uh, clean for them to, to work better. It might help the handbrake if they're given a good clean. So to get them out, they're pretty tight but I've got some more grips on them and just twist them out slowly. Okay guys, I've put some eye protection on because I've got the pins in the vise and I'm going to use the Dremel and this brush on the end of it to clean off the corrosion. This wasn't actually the reason why I bought the Dremel but it seems to be stupid not to use it for this reason so let's get rid of it. Okay to get the big monoblock caliper off again we need to get the pads out and again we need to use a punch and a hammer, it's fair use of a hammer, this is not a bodge, this is what you use it for. Um, so let's do that first. Seems to be the same size punch as before, it's a Brembo caliper on the back for the handbrake anyway, so I guess they're from the same company. Mold grips again, now I can't really show you around the back of here, but the pins are sticking out and the mole grips can go on. It's probably best to do this while the caliper's mounted because you've got something to, to work against then. So let's, let's have another go. Yep, maybe you can hear that squ squeaking. That's good. Now we can use more lube Everything here is going to go in the bin, so pads and discs, it doesn't matter if they get covered in oil. The only thing we really need to save are the 
the pins And uh, yeah, be careful with the spring clip. Hopefully you won't need an impact gun to do this because it should be quite loose. It's, we're only using this because it's already actually set up for something else. But the good thing is you can push in and it winds it out so it means that you're less likely to shear it. That's really easy. That's actually not too corroded. Sometimes they break and it's a nightmare because after that when you put wheels on the disc is moving with the, with the wheel. Um, so yeah, this is, keeps the disc attached to the hub. It's not a safety thing really, it just makes wheel fitting a lot easier. So I'm going to use a breaker bar, just a long bar because it's there quite tight and then this XZM spline key, uh, what number is it? M14, there we go, so pop that on the bolt, there's really nothing to see here, it's just really a tool going into the bolt head. So you don't want to damage these calipers but it's okay to lever against this very carefully especially where you can't see it and just that has helped us pop it off the, the lip on the disc. There's a couple of wires attached so we've got the ABS wiring that runs through the calipers so you really need to be careful you don't want it hanging off that. I'm just resting it on there for now. I'm just going to get a screwdriver and now I'm going to work the pads out of the caliper. Right, so the next thing we need to do is push the piston back into the caliper. Now because the pads are pretty unworn, the, the pistons aren't very far out, I don't know if you can see. To do that, I bought this tool and it just basically pushes these two plates apart and you can get both pistons, so there are two on each side, you can get two, you can put this in the middle and it will push all four back in one go. Okay, that's the piston that's pushed back in, and I'm pretty smooth with the caliper body now, so that's good. We need to give them a good clean up, but we'll take the disc off first, it'll give us a bit more room to manoeuvre and then we can clean the mounting point of the disc on the hub. So let's strap a cable tie round it before it does fall off. Okay, ready to get the disc off now. Now you can hit it with a hammer because it's going in the bin so don't need to be too pressured with it. Just make sure it doesn't land on your feet. So there we have the disc off and on the back it's pretty horrible. Can you see that? On the front it looks alright but these are actually the most important discs on the R8 because most of the weight is on the back because of the engine so it's not like a normal car where the back brakes are actually insignificant. On this car these are very important. Okay what's also really important is to make sure all this is cleaned down beautifully because it's really important for the disc to sit true and it won't sit true if the surface is all corroded. So that's our next job. Okay guys, now normally I would just use a wire brush and a scotch pipe pad for final finishing of this bit, but because I've got the Dremel, I'm going to use it and I think it's probably makes it a bit quicker anyway and a bit more thorough. Now the reason I'm wearing eye protection isn't because bits come flying off this, it's because these little bristles come flying off where the thing wears and they're not the kind of thing you want to get in your eye. So if you're going to use one of these, make sure you use protection. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that, that looks really good, but we still need to clean up the caliper. This is really important because if you don't do this it could be really hard to put the pads in, particularly if they're genuine pads. I'm hoping these TRW ones will fit a little bit better. So I don't really want to use a Dremel because I might damage something, so I'm just going to use a wire brush. The caliper is attached with a cable tie, but let's try and adjust the angle, um, but I should still be able to get in there okay without having to dismount it. Whew. 
Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's hope the pads fit. Now to mount the disc. So you can put a very thin bit of grease on here to stop it corroding and I'm going to do that. We're going to use some Ceratec. So Ceratec is a non-copper grease. It's got no metal in it. So we're just popping that T30 back in. By all means rub a bit of grease on it before you put it in. It just needs to be hand tight. Okay, I've put the caliper on hand tight, then the two bolts holding it on hand tight. Got the pads now. This is the important bit because in the past these have been very hard to fit in. <laughs> if you've ever done one before with the original pads or even padgy pads, you will know these can be awkward. Well, this is going in a tree. We're going to talk that properly later on. Now I'm going to go back to the Dremeling and uh, just clean the pins up, ready for them to go in with the pads, so back in a sec. So again, a couple of shiny pins to go on. Just going to rub them with a bit of grease. So the big sort of issue now is, so take the glasses off, is that you've got to insert these from the rear, which is a bit tricky, especially if we haven't got like a steering thing on the car so we can turn it around. But we'll give it a go. Right then, the flying spring clip has been polished up with the Dremel as well, that's ready to go in. The pins are sort of loosely lined up, but it's got to go in first. As you saw when it flew out, it's got to be under a bit of tension. Well the good news is because the pins are so clean they're going in really easily so I'm not having to hit it hard at all. Okay, so the pins are in now fully. It was quite easy to say because I cleaned them up, it was easier than it otherwise would have been. I used a little extension actually, that end of it, to push the pins in, use the hammer. I would have used the punch backwards, but there wasn't enough room because he's soon hitting the wheel arch. Um, so that worked a treat. And just to check, well, as you can see, probably hopefully, that the pins now are in their little slots and the calipers all the way home. So that's a really good news. So next up we need to torque wrench the two big bolts before you forget to 70 pound foot, I think it's an American thing but it's off the R8 torque forum and then obviously attach the ABS plug to the back of the caliper Just wait for the click Initially I thought a boot had fallen off here because it's just a bit exposed but that's the way it is so don't worry, don't think anything's gone spinning away somewhere, that's how it is. There is a boot on the upper bit you see just there, uh, that's exposed. I nearly forgot to use my lovely new tool so I need to wind the piston back in the caliper so that just spots on there, it's really easy. So you push them in, turn it, it's going around fine there. I think that's all the way back. Okay, put them back on there, try and find your 15mm heavy bolts, which I have. Okay, so we've got our little dinky brake pads for the handbrake caliper. Yeah, you can move. <laughs> the caliper does move, it's not got enough room, so that's in. And then hopefully there's room on this side. Yep, lovely. So just need to line it up with the pins, which thankfully this time go in on the front. Don't forget your spring clip. Again, I've cleaned this up with the 
Dremel, bit of grease in there, don't do any harm. So that's on the outer bits. That's good. So the spring clip is really important. I don't know if you can see its orientation here, but it's got the cross bit going on, it's on the outside, which goes under the pins. It actually sits on top of the pad as well with the center bit. And then the end that goes in towards the car sits on top of the pad there as well. So that's sprung nicely. And then just a couple of taps with the tap with the hammer. Would you believe it, there is one more job that needs to be done and that's to adjust the handbrake. So even though I've changed the pads on the back, I haven't really done much else and the handbrake lever was way too long. So we're gonna go inside and adjust that. Hopefully there's some torch left, yep. So in here, just like a Mark II Golf, is the handbrake adjuster. It's a yoke type thing. So you've got a rod on the handbrake and then that, two, that thing that combines the two cables. And you adjust it with a 10 millimeter spanner. Anyway, I can't show you in there, but you just adjust it with that. And then as you do it, you keep on tightening it up, making sure you can still turn the wheel. There's quite a lot of resistance on there, but it's, that's not the handbrake. There is one thing that I nearly forgot to tell you about, and that's why I bought the Dremel. And it wasn't to do all the things we've done already, although you can tell it's a pretty versatile tool. And I'm not sponsored or even been given this for free by Dremel. I bought it off Amazon, I think, 42 quid. Um, but I'm just amazed by how brilliant it is. Now my light's gone out, so hopefully you can still see me. Anyway, the reason why I bought it is to brighten up these brake discs, because they're a bit corroded and they look a bit poor, especially now the backs look so shiny. So with the Dremel, you can just... Right, eye protection on. So as you can see, you can polish through the corroded aluminium quite easily and then hopefully have a brake disc that's almost as shiny as a brand new one. So there's no point you watching me do all this because it could take quite a long time to get nice and tidy. But when I finished, I'll put the camera back on and you can see what it looks like then. Okay, you joined me about 15 minutes later than when you last were with me. And in that time, I've been round the bell of the brake disc with the Dremel and charge the battery up on the torch as well. And it looks amazing. I've been through about three heads on the Dremel. It does get through them, but they're only cheap if you buy them off eBay. So it's not a lot of money just to get your brake disc looking like this. I'm just giving them a bit of a final finish with a scotch Bright pad, which these are made by Merca, not scotch. And this just evens off the finish now, so it's a bit better. So yeah, I'm pleased with that. Total cost, I know, probably about a quid for the three or four uh, Dremel bits. So yeah, right, now to get the car out, get the wheels on, actually give it a wash because it's a bit dirty, and then show you what it looks like with the shiny brake discs, the satin bronze wheels from Prestige Wheel Centre, and the black wheel nut caps. Okay, well, we finally got there in the end. The brakes are on Project R8, the handbrake's been adjusted and the wheels have got the black cap. So what was it around? Probably, I think it was the beginning of July. So around six weeks ago, we had the car here. It was a bit sunnier. You can tell autumn's on its way. Um, and we had the silver caps on the wheels. We also had rusty brake discs, which just made the whole area look a bit poor. So now we've got a small black cap instead of the claw that was silver. We've got black caps, well, at least on the, on the nuts. I couldn't get a black one for the locking nut. And we've got polished brake bells on the front. These were all corroded before. And then on the back, we've got brand new brake discs, which are obviously polished anyway. So yeah, hopefully this now looks a bit better. I think with the brakes kind of doing something behind the wheel, we don't really need to go red calipers. That was pretty much universally disliked on Instagram, I'd say probably about 20% in favour, 80% against, so yeah, maybe it would look a bit busy. Okay, the blade we can maybe do something with in the longer term. So let's just open the engine bay and have a look under there, because the next job I want to do is to detail under here, because the, the bodywork now is all 
pretty good you know there's nothing embarrassing at all but people look through the window on these and it has to look good so we've still got the corrosion which was mentioned when i got the car i have actually polished it off up to this point but this bit i wanted to save for a video so all these trims can come out airbox out and we can just give them a good clean a dressing with some like um, Meguiar's dressing to make it all shiny okay I haven't got the carbon pack but it can still look good I want to vacuum all around there to get all the crap out the hinges even try and polish that aluminium heat shield where the on the bulkhead there because it's all a bit not very nice clean the top of the fuel pump there because it's a bit corroded and yeah just generally to make it look a lot nicer I've not even cleaned these windows since I got the car so they're a bit messy you can actually see where the GoPro was mounted that was used to record the intro sequence back in probably about January and then actually the body works good but it still needs a polish so it doesn't really benefit Suzuka Grey much and it's actually not covered in swirls amazingly but I still want to give it a coat of 3M's yellow extra fine compound and then a coat of Autoglim HD wax just to finish it off then and I think we're pretty much good to go what to do after that well I suppose I'd better use it so that's another thing to do get a good drive in before the end of summer maybe go to the Nürburgring if anybody wants to go to the Nürburgring let me know there's some good stuff on in the autumn anyway thanks as ever guys for watching this video if you've enjoyed it give it a thumbs up please comment please share please 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 subscribe and I'll see you for the next one really soon